how to design the life that you want and the business that you want. You do not have to accept any of the circumstances that you currently have. And so in this video, I'm going to get into how I map out my future, how I create my goals and my results. And that plan is something I also teach to all of my clients globally. And I'm going to share this with you step by step. So you might want to get a notebook and take some notes. This is Deborah Peters and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. First of all, you have to have a desire. If you don't have a desire to have a different life, then this video is not for you. So the first thing is you have to have a desire that is greater than all of the excuses and all of the limitations and all of the reasons that roll around in your head about why you can't change things, how hard it is to change things, how you're in this environment that doesn't let you change your circumstances or create the life that you want. You have to have a desire that is greater than all of the noise that's going on in your head and even greater than the influencers on the outside that you've allowed to convince you that you can't be, do, or have anything greater than your current circumstances. So that's the first step. And without that desire, some people call it a burning desire. I just think it has to be something that is so strong inside of you that regardless of what's going on with the mind chatter that you have or with the influencers around you that are convincing you otherwise, it has to be bigger, brighter, bolder, and more impactful than all of that. Or you'll just keep creating the same circumstances month after month, year after year, and three, five, ten years will fly by and you'll still be living the same kind of life. So for this particular exercise, I would suggest you pick like a three or five year time block. Now in my experience, when we start actually doing this kind of exercise and we say, okay, it's going to be three years from now, it's going to be five years from now, and we actually start to go through this process, it comes faster than the timeline that you actually allot to it, which is kind of a cool thing. And if it's not coming at all, then you have some other work to do. And that's in some of my other videos where I've shared some of those tools around shifting your mindset, meditating, creating a morning routine for yourself, getting healthy, eating differently, hanging out with different people, etc. So I will touch on some of that in today's video. So grab your book. Here we go. All right. Now, assuming that you have this desire that is greater than your current situation or your current circumstances, you have to get the things that are inside of you that you would like to experience, the ideas, the dreams, the thoughts, the desires, and start to map that out or lay that down on paper. Remember I said in a previous video that when you type things out, it's really only about you know eight keystrokes, give or take. So it's really not engaging all of your neurology. That's why handwriting down your goals is really the key to getting a new bandwidth happening, a new neurological process, like getting more neurons to fire. If you're not writing stuff out longhand, then you're really not taking advantage of all of your senses, which I want you to have absolutely every advantage as we go through this process. So what I would suggest you do is get yourself a little notebook and or a big notebook and just schedule some time without any interference. So no people to talk to, no text messages, no emails, you know, just go sit in a park for an afternoon or, or 
you know, go to um, a different environment, anything, maybe even go to your local college or, or go to your local university campus, like go somewhere where people are not going to be connecting with you because you're around people that you don't know. So get to that point and then just start writing everything that comes to your mind. I have done this exercise so many times in my life and it's fascinating because every time I do it, I get everything that I write down. I, and then I get to write down more stuff. So for those of you that are out there that are saying, well, what if I write all this down and it shows up, then what am I gonna do? Trust me, you're gonna come up with more stuff. I, I have absolute faith in you that this is not the end of the road. You're not just gonna write all this stuff down, get it all, and then have this like, well, now I, now I have everything, now what do I do? It's like, no, you're a creator and it keeps coming and coming and coming and that's why we're never satisfied because we always want to create more and it just keeps coming from within, which is a fantastic problem to have. All right, so you're writing all this down and you're just doing it as a mind dump. There doesn't have to be any order to it. In fact, I would say to you, don't give it any order. Just let yourself put it onto paper and just keep writing and writing and writing and writing. And once you get it like all dumped out, then we can start putting it into some form. And so what I typically will do is say, okay, let's now take this big mind dump and maybe what we can do is we can start dividing it into the areas of our lives like business, wealth, health, relationships, you know, romantic or, or business or personal and, you know, spiritual growth, personal development. You can start to, you can get yourself a five subject notebook and you can start to take all that mind dump and you can start to put it into categories if you like. If that's a way of organizing that you feel like you connect to. Some people don't connect to that. Personally, I used to connect to that. And now I find that it's a little broader brush stroke. I'm not quite so controlling about my goals at this point, because once you start doing this exercise year after year, you, you develop it as a way of being. And when you develop something as a way of being, it becomes your second nature. So you don't have to be quite so, how shall we say, linear about it. So you get that done and now you can start to look at, okay, how does this particular goal or objective actually impact my life? This is where you start to gain relevancy because now having a different life and, and living the life and having the business that you desire actually starts to take some shape. So you can see where all of this stuff that's inside of you that is really wanting to get out and get onto paper so you can start to put it into form. And putting your goals and your desires and your dreams onto paper is really the first step in giving it form. Otherwise, it's just in your head. And if it's just in your head, I can promise you that rarely is it going to come to fruition. All right, so now we've got all of this written down, you can start developing it into categories, and you can find the pivotal thing in each area that is really going to be a game changer for you. That pivot point enables you to connect to the next step I'm going to give you, which is all about habits. So, in my morning routine, the first thing I do after I meditate is I write down my goals. Now I personally break my life down into this big goal for the year and then I cut it up into quarters because 12 re weeks really isn't a very long time. So as you're gaining momentum with your habits and you know, you're believing more and more and connecting more deeply with your goals and your dreams and your objectives, 
they're starting to take shape. So they're now they're inspiring you and now they're leading you forward. They're giving you pause for uh, insights and epiphanies of, you know, you're starting to pay attention to your inner guidance and it's leading you toward the goal and the goal is coming closer to you. I find that by taking that time to lay out that goal for the year and then break it down into quarters is amazing. So I don't have to, you know, necessarily white knuckle things of, okay, how am I going to get there? It starts to reveal itself as you're unpacking this from this big mind dump of everything that's been percolating inside of you and you start to break it into quarters then you can see where you're getting the guidance and the inspiration on a weekly basis and on a daily basis which by the way having that daily huddle with yourself is really critical so this piece of it really has to get done so i write out my goals for that 12 week block i also have my year goal written down and it's in front of me i say these things out loud to myself when i'm looking into the mirror so you know at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day as it were you can either connect with the news and the world out there or you can connect with what you're creating and then you don't except less than. So now you've got these 12 week objectives and you've got this big year goal and you've done this mind dump and you know what you want your life to look like in the next three to five years. So now this starts to impact the decisions that you make right now. It impacts who you hang out with. It impacts how you spend your time. It impacts the information that you're putting into your mind and the conversation content that you're having throughout the day. It impacts how you take care of your body. It impacts the food that you choose, the beverages that you choose, what you feed your mind and what you feed your body at the end of the day are really truly the same thing. So as you're going through this process, you actually start to see your entire daily life take on a new shape. It takes on a new feeling as well. So you've got that pivot in each category. So let's say you want your business to hit larger numbers. You have to know what those numbers are. You just can't say, you know, this year we're just going to increase our numbers by 10%. It's like pick a target that has some meaning and then bring everybody together on that and get everybody on the same page and have that energy coalesce and come together and really create a powerful mastermind, which is something that I engage in on a weekly basis. I have a small, intimate mastermind, my personal mastermind, that I initiated and I've created and I've invited a couple people to the table to be a part of because I know, one, they'll never have a negative thought about what I'm creating. It'll be full on support. Two, they'll give it to me straight if I'm starting to backslide on my focus. And three, they know that we are infinite possibilities in motion that I can be, do, and have anything I focus on. Because where your attention goes is really what shows up in your life. So I have a mastermind, I do it on a weekly basis, and we're creating really big things independently in our business lives and in our personal lives. And then we come together and we hit the high notes, if we need support in a particular area, just to remember to just always focus on creating. It's good to have a mastermind, but you have to be really, really careful who you surround yourself with. So we have some ground rules, no commiserating, no focusing on what won't work, 
no focusing on the past and absolutely zero conversation around that that can't happen like we can never have that conversation it's just not a part of what we're doing so having a mastermind with the right people can completely put the wind in your sails i'm telling you so choose those people really wisely and i can say this that when you're masterminding with yourself and your creator and you're masterminding with those like-minded people, you suddenly just exponentially take yourself to a whole other level of power to know that there are like-minded folks. Of course you can do it on your own, absolutely. I've done it, I've had clients do it, but it's also nice to have a couple of people that are at your level or higher you know, you always want to mentor up that can be that mastermind with you and fuel that energy. So um, that pretty much covers it. You know, you want to have a daily review. So at the beginning of every day, I write down my goals. I write down what I'm grateful for. I look at my targets. I see how that all fits into the bigger picture. And then at the end of the day, I do a review on my day. I look at where I, I fell short and I didn't make the steps that I knew if I would have made would have contributed to the goal for one reason or another. And I also look at what I did that was amazing. And then I make a list of that and I congratulate myself for that and that is then my focus so I go into the day with gratitude and appreciation and the power of creation and I leave the day with gratitude and appreciation and the power of creation because now whatever energy you go to sleep in is the energy you wake up in so I make sure when I go to sleep, I review how awesome of a day I had and how thrilled I am about my future and what I'm creating. And voila, I wake up in the morning and boom, there I am. Now I just wanna give you um, some, I guess, case study on how powerful this is and why I continue to do it. So I, when I first started this process and I was just learning about infinite intelligence or unconscious mind or the quantum field or the universe or whatever you want to call it, and this was pre the secret, okay, for those of you that are, that want to say, well, this is the secret. It's like, well, the secret was, was really just something that talked about age old universal laws. <laughs> And that's good, we needed to hear that. So I, I had this picture of this car that I wanted and I put it on my fridge. Wow, I bought that exact car. Three months later, I found myself driving that car. It was white, it had a convertible top, white on white, it was absolutely gorgeous and it was fast and it just, it fit it fit me and it came from having that visual imprint on my fridge and looking at that every single day multiple times a day and as I would look at it I would get into the feeling of it see this is the missing piece in most people's exercise when they have a vision board you have to feel you have to feel what it's like to have that now because your point of power is in the present moment and it's whatever you're thinking and feeling right now and the way you're being with yourself right now is what's creating tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. So if you want your life to look different tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, you have to get yourself into some new habits. Another experience I had with this, because now I'm convinced, right? I put this picture of this car on my fridge and now I'm driving this car. So the next experience I had with this is I wrote down this, I did this exercise, I wrote it down and instead of putting it into categories, I actually just broke it into the high points. 
So out of several pages of notes of this is how I want my life to look, I, I actually broke that down into 46 bullets. And I found that raggedy piece of paper one day, uh, several years later, and every bullet was checked. So now I'm really high on this whole thing. I'm like, wow, I've really found it. I have found the, I have found the secret. So then the next thing was I envisioned this beautiful house that I wanted to buy. And there was a park I would go to several times a week and always on Sunday with my dog. We would climb up the slope and at the top of the slope was this big rock and it was kind of flat on top. So I'd crawl up on there and I had a view of the ocean at the time when I was standing on this rock and I would feel and speak and visualize this home I wanted. And I did that every Sunday and sometimes during the week if I could sneak out in the evening if the days were long after work and my dog would be there and I'd be declaring it out loud and I'd get into the feeling of it. Wow. Like eight months, nine months later, I moved into that house and, and, and in the backyard was a rock. Practically the same size. It was unbelievable. I mean, obviously it's believable. I was just like, oh my God, not only did I get the house, but I got the, the, the yard overlooking the ocean with the rock. Okay, so you have to be careful what you wish for because this stuff comes to pass. So if you're feeling sorry for yourself, if you're visualizing or entertaining negative thoughts, then that's what makes your life look the way it is. Um, it's just so powerful and I'd really like to see you get the life you want and the business you want. So then the final step in all of this is about execution. You have to follow through. You have to follow through. I'm going to say it one more time. You have to follow through. So what I do in what I'm writing down is I write specific, like at least one specific behavior that is going to be the difference that makes the difference between that being just something I've written on a piece of paper that I want or I desire and that I actually go after and take action on because here's the deal. And there's scripture in the Bible on this for those of you that are finding your inspiration through the Bible. When you move toward what it is that you desire, what you desire moves toward you. So, I just gave myself chills <laughs> um, and emotion. So when you look at something in your mind or in your heart that you would like to experience and you start taking action on it, you make a phone call, you send an email, you do some research on it, you go to a meeting, you shake some hands, you have some conversations, then it starts coming toward you. So it's all in the follow through, you see, but the previous steps are the foundation. And I always do an accountability exercise with myself on did I really take the action that I knew it I could at the end of this day? I look back on the day, did I really take the action that I knew that I could? Or did I let my thoughts roll around in fear and doubt? I mean, it's up to you. Wherever you put your focus is what you get. And that, my friends, is my exercise on how to get the life the body, the health, the relationships, the business that you want. Just take these tools and run each area of your life through these steps. And then check back with me in a few weeks and let me know what things are looking like. I'd be very curious to hear from you. 
So thank you so much. And I wish you a blessed day. I will see you tomorrow. Ciao. This is Deborah.